it's Julia Gold. I think it's Natalie who will present. Oh, she's coming. Very good. Thanks. Hi. Welcome on our stage. So we have 15 minutes. Okay. Um, just start, please. Great. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Natalie Sanger. I'm the Vice President Resource Development for Tudor Gold. Thank you. So today I'll be talking to you about the Treaty Creek Project in the Golden Triangle of British Columbia and our advancement on the project since our first resource, uh, mineral resource estimate that was reported in March of 2021. I'll be making some forward-looking statements throughout the presentation. So in March of 2021, we released the first resource estimate. This is a large porphyry system, gold dominant with some copper and lesser silver. Um, you can see the numbers here, they're pretty exceptional and exciting, 19.4 million ounces at 0.74 grams per ton gold equivalent in the MNI categories, and another 7.9 million ounces at 0.79 grams per ton gold equivalent in the inferred categories. We are located in the Golden Triangle. A lot of you are familiar with Seabridge or Skeena or Pradium was taken over by Newcrest, so a lot of successful mines and, and big very interesting deposits in that area. So these are all of our neighbors. Um, and because of that, we have excellent infrastructure in the area, so very mature infrastructure that's being used. The Taltan Nation is one of our um, First Nation groups that we have really strong relationships with. We work with them. And we have a management team that is, um, oh, excuse me, a management team that is very aggressive in um, advancing this project. So looking here at the financial side of things, which is not my side, I'm a geologist, but we, we sit um, just over a dollar right now trading um, market cap around kind of between two and 300 million. We have just over 200, or 200 million shares outstanding. Tudor Holdings has just under 30% of the shares. So if anyone is familiar with Walter Storm, he uh, started this project, or started the company in 2016 and he has since passed. All of his shares were put into a holding, holding company, so that's, that's what that is. And then Eric Sprott has been a very active investor with us, um, participating in many financings since 2019, including the last one we did this year. We have analyst coverage by Research Capital, Roth Capital, and Fundamental Research Corp. So the, the lead of the company is Ken Konkin. He's our president and CEO. Ken worked for many years with Silver Standard, so his career is as a geologist. He's had about 40 years experience in the industry, and after Silver Standard, he worked with Pradium Resources. He was involved with the discovery of the Bruce Jack Mine, the Valley of the Kings deposit, um, which was later purchased by Newcrest. And then I've worked alongside Ken since 2008. Um, I've done all of my years in the Golden Triangle in a very small area, so I'm very familiar with the rocks and familiar with um, developing projects into becoming successful mines. This spring, we added a couple technical advisors to our team, so management looks a little bit different. Our advisory panel is strong with Stephen Quinn, Joe Ovsenik, and Ken McNaughton. And then we also have Ronnie Stoffele, who's one of our directors. Some of you might have seen him here at the conference. So again, the company was started in 2016 by Walter. And then the, the, sorry, the exploration at that time focused on smaller projects. So still 40,000 meters of drilling over four years. In 2018, the Gold Storm deposit was discovered with a hole that had 563 meters of 0 0.98 grams per ton gold equivalent. So in 2020, there was a very aggressive drill program with 45,000 meters. And after that year is when we did our first mineral resource update. Since then, we've drilled 72,000 meters. So those 72,000 meters is what we're going to use to update the resource in early 2023. So we're looking at late Q1, early Q2 for that update. And then through the last couple of years, we've started initial baseline studies that we'll use towards permitting. Um, we've also made a couple discoveries at the perfect storm zone uh, and the calm before the storm zone. We also continue to advance our metallurgical studies and work towards a PEA. So the Golden Triangle, a lot of people know where it is, but just in case you're unfamiliar, it's up here on the um, kind of northern portion of British Columbia along the coastline. 
We're located within 20 kilometers of a highway and a transmission line. There's a port in Stewart, BC that's actively used to ship concentrate. There's some regional airports in the area. And again, excuse me, we have that strong relationship with the Taltan government. We also have um, easy access to water. So looking a little bit closely where our claims lie, again, our neighbors are Skeena, Newcrest, Seabridge. Um, something to note in the southern part, you see the red line there, that's a big fault where all of Seabridge's porphyry deposits um, sit again. So it's a big plumbing system for all these big porphyries to come up. That, that fault line runs straight down, and you see a property that's called labeled Gold Star Metals. That was actually Tudor's property, and we just spun that out last week into a completely new company, um, Gold Star Metals. So it's named after the Gold Star deposit, but the Gold Star deposit is still on treaty and is still Tudor's deposit. And I, it's, it's a little bit confusing, but, but that's how it works. So if anyone's interested in a, a company that's making new discoveries, that will be kind of the style of Gold Star Metals. And Tudor were advancing an already known pretty robust um, deposit. So this is a look, oh actually one more thing, I'm gonna go back. The Seabridge Road on the side there. So this was a proposed road, it's a permitted road by Seabridge. Seabridge is advancing their project and de-risking it as well. They're about halfway, excuse me, about halfway done building that road. And where are they gonna work with them to build the other half and meet up with them, or maybe they'll build it all the way, but it does go right onto our property. So currently we're flying in our, our drills and everything by building and completing this road. We'll save a couple million dollars every year by obviously driving onto the property. Okay, so this is a snapshot, of a, a, a kind of a wide section of the resource uh, that we put out in March of 2021. So the gold storm deposit sits again at the northern edge of, or the northern end of a large structure called the Sulfurets Thrust Fault. And then you have all of Seabridge's big porphyries sitting along that fault line as well. In between Iron Cap and Gold Storm, we have an area called the Perfect Storm Zone, where a couple major structures intercept one another. And we have some characteristics of a potential other porphyry in that area, and I'll show you some drilling that we did as well. So this just summarizes the resource that we did in March 2021 with the top part of the table being the in-pit resource, the middle part of the table being the out-of-pit resource, and the bottom is a total of the entire resource. So you can see that the gold, if you added, measured, and indicated, and inferred, it's just over 24 million ounces. So it is a gold-dominant system when we're talking about gold equivalent. It's often confusing to understand what metals, how much of them. So it is gold dominant, and that is a little bit different from Seabridge's more copper dominant systems. We do still have 130 million ounces of silver and over 1.4 billion pounds of copper. And what we expect to see from the next resource update is um, a significant increase in the overall all copper amount. Um, the resource itself will probably be similar in overall ounces of gold equivalent. And the overall grade, we're going to push up the global grade of the entire resource in all categories is 0 0.76. And we'd like to push that up towards um, one gram per ton. So this is just a plan view of the area, Gold Storm in the center, and then a few other areas of interest around here. And then this is a nice slide kind of to summarize the characteristics of the deposit. So the blue zone right in the middle is where all of our copper is. So we have gold everywhere. That's, this map is gold equivalent, so you can't really see the copper here. But if you look at the numbers in the blue area to the side, so whole GS21113, 1.44 grams per ton gold equivalent over 405 meters. And you can see the copper number is quite significant there with 0.62% copper. So the exploration program from 2022 looked at stepping out of the 2021 resource area quite significantly. The yellow line on the map on the map on the left hand side shows the 2021 resource line. And then you can see on section A, GS21, 113 wedge two was a hole that was very significant for us in 2021 to show how deep and how strong our copper grades were coming in along with gold 
outside of that resource area. So we targeted that even more in 2022, but this is a, a really nice intercept to show how strong that copper is. So we have 732 meters at 1.6 grams per ton gold equivalent. So 0.91 grams per ton gold, 3.6 silver, and 0.53% copper. This looks at, or kind of shows the potential. So the system is open to the north, but it is also open in all directions. So here more to the west or southwest is a section looking from Goldstorm and over to another zone called Eureka. We have a deeper system of mineralization called DS5. And the characteristics of that are quite similar to what we see at the Eureka zone. So our, our geological concept here is that there could be a potential for this mineralization to be linked and that's yet to, yet to be drill tested. So on top of all of these really consistent kind of lower grades, but over a huge area, we have higher grades that punctuate the system. So we do see epithermal veins with visible gold sometimes. Uh, an example of that is GS22, 134 at the top right-hand side, 25.5 meters of 9.96 grams per ton gold equivalent. And that was very surprising to us. So we were stepping out with that hole um, about 450 meters from when that one was drilled. There was nothing in between that and then the closest hole. And we intercepted that deep in our porphyry system. So we do expect to find more of these things as we drill around right now. Some of the spacing is quite large, like two, 300 meters between holes. But we are consistently seeing these higher grades punctuate the system. And that might add up in the end. So I very briefly mentioned Perfect Storm. This is a zone that sits south of Goldstorm and Copper Bell. And I said before, this is where we think the characteristics look similar to another porphyry or on the edge of a porphyry, just peripheral to it. Hole PS2106 was drilled in 2021 with 118.6 meters of 0.72 grams per ton gold equivalent. So that's an area we're gonna go back to next year. Um, and probably do two to 5,000 meters at perfect storm. The Gold Storm Copper Bell program will look something more like 25,000 meters. And then that drilling will move us towards developing our PEA. So overall, Tudor Gold has significant leverage to gold just because of the sheer size of our porphyry deposit and the amount of gold that we have there. Um, We're actively expanding our resource and we expect that resource to increase in grade and stay the same in ounces overall with a significant increase in the amount of <coughs> copper. We're obviously located in a very good mining jurisdiction, a safe jurisdiction um, with excellent infrastructure to support mining, as well as a very supportive um, community. And that, inc that includes the First Nation, including the Taltans. Uh, I think that's everything. And thank you, everyone, for your time today. Okay, thank you very much, Natalie. You're here with the team the whole day, so the rest of the day, <clears throat> so we can have one to ones. Yep. If you're interested, maybe um, a question? Okay, I, I have one question. I mean, there are a lot of rumors what will happen in the gray and the, the triangle, in the golden triangle. So there are big, big deposits like yours. I mean, 90, more than 19 million ounces. That's a lot, and that's what big companies are looking for. Mm -hmm. But if you have 19 million ounces, only big companies can buy that. Yeah. So, yeah. And we have Seabridge, a neighbor, very active Newcrest, the Australian guys, they have money yeah. and the technical skills. Um, <clears throat> and there are still rumors now regarding Tudor because, because Walter Storm passed away. Um, there's a big package of shares, 28%, I think. That's right. What will happen? So I don't want to... Oh, with Walter's shares? But with Walter's shares yeah. specifically? So, uh, yeah, so Walter's shares, that was the Tudor Holdings portion yeah. of, of the share side. They're held and, and controlled by Helmet Finger, one of our directors. Yeah. Yeah. So There might be minor amounts of selling, but Helmet has the say on all of those shares, and he sits on our board, and he's yeah. closely aligned with management. Yeah. Okay, good. They're fairly safe.